Good morning, Calvary. Thanks for joining us on this episode of Your Word for the Day. My name is Robert. You want to know what I think the most undervalued question is? Why? Yes, that's actually the question. Why? See, the question of why is so incredibly powerful and useful, yet as a question, so many of us despise it. I think that's because for so many of us who are or have been parents, we've become jaded at the question of why. Because if you have kids in your life, no doubt you've gone through that season where the only question they seem to be able to ask is why, and over and over and over again. And most frustratingly, sometimes they don't even seem to care about the answer, but they just keep asking why. But see, the question of why is so important for us to understand our world, for us to understand the reason that things are the way that they are, and even for us to understand our own heart and motivations. And as I share from Genesis today, the passage reveals the answer to a lot of why questions that exist in our world. See, we left off yesterday with a reminder of how sin entered our world and how Adam and Eve set up a pattern of rebellion on earth. And today we see the consequences of that. I've got a long passage. I want you to follow along. Um, maybe if you've even got a Bible or Bible app on your device, uh, you've got an extra one, follow along. But Genesis chapter 3, starting in verse 14, it says, The Lord said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and above all beasts of the fields, and on your belly you shall go, and the dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring, and he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. To the woman, he said, I will surely multiply your pain and childbearing. In pain, you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be contrary to your husband, but he shall rule over you. And to Adam, the man, he said, because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten of the tree that I've commanded you, you shall not eat it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In pain you shall eat all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the plants of the field. But the sweat of your face you shall eat bread until you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken, for you are dust, and to dust you, are, you shall return. Rather, The man called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living, and the Lord God made for Adam and for his wife garments of skins and clothed them. Then the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us in knowing good and evil, lest he reach out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him out of the garden of Eden to work the ground from which he was taken. He drove out the man, and to the east of the garden he placed a cherubim and flaming sword that turned away everything to guard the way to the tree of life. This is a longer passage where God issues the consequences for the rebellion that Adam and Eve demonstrated here. But what does this tell us? Well, it shows us that things that cause pain and suffering in our world are rooted in one thing, and that's sin. And the way that sin has fractured not just us as people, but also fractured the world that we live in. So think about some of these things. Why is there tension between good and evil? Because of sin. Why is there relational tension in marriages? Because of sin. For ladies, why is childbirth painful? Not that I would know, but it's because of sin. Why is work hard and exhausting? Because of sin. Why is there suffering in our world? Sin. Why are there natural disasters? You guessed it, sin. Why are there diseases that kill and hurt us? Sin is the reason for all of these things. But the good news is this. God cares for us. See, there in verse 16, we have what has been called the Proto-Euangelion, or the first gospel. And that is the good news that Jesus will return and stomp the head of Satan. We now know that that event that God is foretelling was Jesus on the cross for us. The good news is that God cares for us, even though there was a cost for him. But notice that was the case there in the garden. Adam and Eve were, were clothed but they were clothed with animal skins. That required a sacrifice of animals for this. There was a cost associated for God, yet he paid that cost for his people. Why did he do this? Because God loves us. Why did God send Jesus to die on a cross for us, for you? Because he loves you. See, my prayer for you is that the question of why would never be a thing that discourages, but a question that leads you to the hope of Christ in your life, just as it does here in Genesis. We can look at the suffering and the difficulties around us and see that the why behind that is sin, but the, the question of why do we have hope 
is the love of God demonstrated in Jesus' sacrifice for us. So I hope that why encourages you and inspires you and gives you a little bit of hope in your life today. Have a great day, Calvary, and remember that God loves and cares for you. We'll see you next time.